Welcome back to another segment of Behind the Scenes of the Waltons. As you can see, I am back in my kitchen. It's an interesting thing about being in the kitchen because as uh, some of you probably noted, I'm not really what you'd call a cook. I can cook, I can follow a recipe, but it isn't a passion for me like it is for some people. So I'm always looking for things that can be done, not taking a lot of time, but something that's good and healthy and quick. So. Today, I decided that I would go with making just a, a basic vegetable soup, like in the homecoming, which was the very first meal you ever saw us eat. Um, we had vegetable soup. Now, in that case, it looked like uh, mostly beans and maybe some carrots or something like that, um, and some broth. Um, in this case, I'm going to add in um, some ground turkey seasoned ground turkey. So that adds a little bit more protein in it if you would like, but fresh vegetables are best. I like to use a vegetable broth. I usually add some extra water because I think it gets a little thick. Next, we're going to add the onion. Not about you, but I do hate chopping onions because it does make my eyes water. They never let us cut onions on the Waltons because of course they didn't want us to be screaming tears down our face during filming. Unless of course that's what scene was about. <laughs> and evidently some actresses do use onion on their fingers to create tears in scenes, which of course you wouldn't be able to see. Next thing I like to add is cabbage. I like my vegetable soup to be chunky, so I tend to use large pieces of the vegetables wherever possible. Celery. Again, I like to do big chunks. Now, in choice of what vegetables you put in is sort of based upon what do you like to taste and a lot of times, this is something I'll throw together when I just want sort of something warm and comforting to eat. And I don't necessarily shop for it. I'll just look around and see what do I have available in my refrigerator and make it from there. So this is sort of a catch-all, almost leftovers kind of a soup that you can make. I am a big fan of bok choy. In this case, I have baby bok choy, leaves and all. Next into the mix, mushrooms. I happen to really like barley, so in this case, I'm going to add some barley to the soup. Now I'm adding cauliflower and broccoli into the mix. Now, uh, sometimes if I don't have a lot of time, I will simply grab a package of fresh prepackaged um, vegetables of one kind or another. That'll make uh, my whole preparation faster. If I have time, I will work from scratch. So your call and your preference, depending on how much time you have and what you have readily available either in your uh, refrigerator or your garden, for those of you who are able to grow your own vegetables. So uh, just go raid that refrigerator or garden. And although I often add pesto on top, I sometimes add pesto into the actual soup as it is cooking. How long I actually cook, this depends on how firm you like the actual vegetables in there. Um, and then all of the seasoning is pretty much just to taste. Um, I often go easy on it while I'm actually cooking it. And then when I put a bowl together, I add in more salt if I want it. Um, I often add more pesto. Um, and then a lot of times I like to sprinkle like grated or shaved Parmesan on top. That gives it just a little bit of a bite as well. So those are some of my favorite things to do. Um, the main thing being that it is all real food. And that has become very important to me too. Um, and I think that's sort of um, an aspect of the Waltons when we talk about things that the Waltons ate. Now, of course, in the 70s, we weren't always eating foods that were 
around in the 30s in terms of how we sourced them. Um, of course, on the Waltons, we had our own vegetable garden. We had chickens, so we had eggs. We had milk from the, from the cow. And then there were just whatever ingredients um, we could get at Aikadze's store. We really didn't eat processed foods because processed foods weren't around very much at that time. I think a lot of um, the issues that people are having health-wise that are food-related are because of the change in the foods and the fact that we aren't getting really natural ingredients in the same way that we did during the Waltons. So in a way, going back to this kind of cooking is sort of going back to the Waltons. So I encourage you to get creative in the sourcing of your foods and eat as many um, fresh uh, vegetables as you can. Um, I think that uh, it's just the way to go. As at Simmers, I am going to season some ground turkey to add to it. So ground turkey, I'm just going to add just basic. Salt, pepper. My go-to ingredients, my favorites are always onion and garlic. I think they go with a lot of things, so we'll do a little bit of that. Um, this will just give the um, ground turkey a little bit more flavor um, that it may not pick up from the soup. Um, I also um, like Worcestershire sauce, so I'm gonna throw a little bit of that in. If I had not already added pesto to the soup, I would probably now add pesto to the ground turkey. And then the soup is boiling, so what I'm going to do is I am going to just drop little sort of uh, meatballs into the soup. Now, um, I did have a number of people with the applesauce cake mention that they couldn't eat that kind of food for health reasons. They're diabetic, pre-diabetic, and in all honesty, I don't eat much of that. I, I do sometimes, but it is not a common thing that I eat in my diet. People have asked me sometimes what you know sort of health regime I use, I follow to um, stay healthy, to stay in shape. Um, of course, as you know, I've been active in sports pretty much my whole life. So most of my exercise comes from sports. I do, I used to uh, say that I ran, now um, jogging would be, <laughs> would be a generous way to put the speed at which I, I uh, move or run. Um, but I do try to get out at least once a week and usually do three to four miles. Sometimes like during early shutdown when I couldn't go out and do things like um, riding my horse and stuff uh, and had to stay inside. I literally just ran laps in my house, you know, from one end of the house to the other, or sometimes even just back and forth in, in a room if I was, you know, watching something. So sports have always been um, my go-to. The good thing about running is that I can take a pair of shoes anywhere. It's easy to pack. Um, and with all the traveling and stuff that I have done, a lot of the theater work, not all sports are easy to travel with, so I needed something like that. And a lot of um, hotels have gyms, so I would go get on a treadmill. So it's something that I don't love, but I'm willing to do, and I feel like it's important to stay active. I find that staying active is easier than trying to get going again if I've stopped. So that's... Um, it's kind of like the lesser of two <laughs> tortures. <laughs> the other thing I can tell you about myself is that about 10 years ago, I was diagnosed. I found out that I had hepatitis C. It was something I somehow got from blood transfusions when I was about 16. Um, this, so now it was like 40 years later. Um, so it came as a complete surprise. I was fortunate um, in additional testing and biopsies to find out that uh, my, I had a very low viral load and that my body was doing really well combating the virus because, um, because of things like being in good shape and never having really been a smoker, never really been much of a drinker, um, and 
you know, I kept my weight down. So all those types of things were really in my favor and it allowed me to, my body to deal with this. At that point in time, um, I did research about what was liver friendly foods uh, because at that point, my doctor recommended to not do anything with treatment um, because the treatments at that time were pretty severe and not necessarily successful in eradicating the kind of strain of the virus that I had. So he just said we'd monitor my, you know, monitor my situation and go from there. And that there were treatments in the pipeline that were going to be a big improvement. So for a number of years, what I did was I changed my diet and I cut out things like processed foods and pastas and a lot of um, wheat and grain, a lot of things that my body was kind of sensitive to anyway, but I just didn't know. Um, so we did some lifestyle changes like that and it really made a big difference. I felt a lot healthier and I found that I actually uh, then became much more sensitive to food. So then if now if I eat something that is too rich or too heavy, I, I don't feel well. So my body's gotten used to eating a lot of salads and protein and vegetables and things like that. Um, and I got used to it and I, for me, I think it's really about finding the foods that are good for you that you will eat, the ones you, the ones you can enjoy. Because like dieting, it's not, it doesn't work to do something like a crash sort of thing. Oh, I'm going to do this for right now. And then once I lose the weight, I'm gonna go back and just to my old habits. So any kind of lifestyle change, I find, means you have to, literally, it's a lifestyle change. So I did that for health reasons. And uh, fortunately, uh, a number of, a few years ago, the treatments had improved and I was able to do a very simple one pill a day for eight weeks. And last time I was tested, the virus was out of my system. So it's been a happy result for me. And meanwhile, I have modified my eating habits and I think it is adding to my health and my longevity. So there you go. There's my um, my story and why in, if I do these cooking segments, I'm much more likely to advocate for um, healthy meals, simple but healthy. And maybe for those of you who don't have a lot of time to spend in the kitchen prepping, maybe they will be useful suggestions for you. And I would love if you have simple, good, healthy things that you can recommend to me. I would love hearing about that too. All right, the last thing I'm going to do before pulling it off of the heat is add spinach. And just freshly rinsed, cleaned, cut, or in my case, uh, at the grocery store, a package of pre-washed and prepared spinach. And just do this at the end so that it doesn't go too uh, doesn't disappear and become too limp before you even eat it. So it's kind of a last minute addition. You just sort of want to fold it into the soup. It is taste test time. This is a vegetable with ground turkey soup. That's really good. The thing about this, because I never make it the same twice, is that it's always a surprise. <laughs> but this is really good. So, thank you for joining me for this addition in my kitchen as we make the 2022 version of vegetable soup. I'll be back with more behind the scenes of the Waltons, more Ask Judy, more with my castmates, and maybe another healthy eating recipe from old style Walton food.